Hit Point, an anime news show, a niche news show, a JRPG news show, a show where Baku and I talk about anything and everything that catches our interest and or ire. We broadcast live every single Monday, except for the ones that we don't. Uh, at 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, we'll be previewing trailers, talking about rumors, uh, taking a look at some pretty cool looking indie games here in a little bit as well. Uh, we'll be talking about all kinds of stuff. Honestly, we got a full, a full show today. Baku, it is good to see you. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good, but your intro there, that was, that there was, was like a slip an 80. Up. I know Dude, that was, that was like an 85. Oh no. That was I know. Like... <laughs> I was, I was only, I was only like, uh, you know, Kaioken, not quite super Saiyan there. Uh, you know, yeah, I'm sorry. Here, let's, let's do it again. Just kidding. <laughs> I was ready for you, man. I'm like, let's go. Come on. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, nope, nope. I got, the moment has passed. <laughs> yep. You know, sometimes you just got to learn to adapt and overcome. And uh, today we're going to be overcoming some pretty awesome news. Uh, and we actually got a lot of comments from last week's episode. Some that I'd like to just go ahead and start with here. Let me yes. uh, switch our... Yeah, that's right. We've got a, a section change here. There we go. Comments. Mm -hmm. uh, and I will also say that we have a couple of voicemail... Uh, well, we got a couple of voicemails, one of mm -hmm. which we're going to listen to today. Uh, and okay. uh, yeah, so go ahead and lead us off with this first one here, dude. All right. We've got a comment from Broken1394. Missed the news on Shin, Ma Shin Megami Tensei 5 and literally just bought the Switch Premium Edition today. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> uh, dope. They said, mm -hmm. uh, may have to wait for Vengeance to come out before playing as that will be worth getting as I haven't played the OG. Really enjoyed listening to the podcast. Well, thank you so much for writing. Uh, you, okay, so I'm, I'm going to have to break it to you. The, the Vengeance also has the OG path, which you can select in the very beginning. That's so true. So it's not like... So it's not like P5 Royal where like the thing is like laced into one whole route, if that yeah. makes sense. Like mm -hmm. in the very beginning, you get to pick the OG route or like the Vengeance route. So that should just be your definitive edition. I, I don't know. Yeah, I, except I, I if don't you want to like play it with like better frame rates or something, I totally get that too. But there's no reason. Yeah, you're right. There's no reason to like hold off on playing if you just bought the uh, the OG version. No reason yeah. to hold off unless you just want the the better visual fidelity experience, <laughs> which I suppose is <laughs> it, a pretty good reason. I mean, if you didn't open the wrapper on the premium edition, maybe return it and or sell it. Wow, well, is it still worth anything? I don't know. This has been two Could weeks, you... at least. So I don't know, man. I don't... Ooh. It might be beyond Ooh. return window at this Ooh. point. But I okay. will say it, it does It does just highlight just one more reason why it stings for, like, the definitive or, or the better versions to come out within, like... I don't know. What do you think is a, an appropriate window for a re-release before it stops feeling kind of like we got uh, hosed? Yeah, like, like an enhanced like, re-release, like Dragon Quest S, eleven uh, S. You know how it has the enhanced mm -hmm. wins, um, or Persona Five Royal, which came out, you know, like a few years after Persona Five. Like, what do you think is a good window for them to like wait before, mm -hmm. uh, before releasing an enhanced port? Before, because I'm like, uh, it feels to me like three years is a little bit of a short time window for that. Yeah, my. My personal feeling uh, will be one generation. Mm. So like, yeah, like a console generation. So like PS4. Yeah, like console generation. Not not human generation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's, a, that's a bit long. Okay, that's, sure. where, that's when Remix should come in. Um, <laughs> but no, I, I think like if a game came on PS4 and you release like an enhanced version for PS5, you know, with all the DLCs and stuff, that's, that's a pretty fair game, I think. Uh, same gen add stuff to it. I think that's kind of um that's kind of weird. uh okay. Whoa. Wow. Yeah, I'm I just had like a power flicker or something. Uh oh, oh geez. Okay, like my whole my whole thing. Wow, okay. Holy moly. Am I alive? 
I think I had a power flicker up here. My my lights and everything went out for a second. Luckily, luckily, I remember we remember we had a power outage another time. And I had like lost the entire stream. I have since put my whole computer on a, a uninterruptible power supply. So the stream kept going. And so we're still live. Oh, but like everything disconnected and reconnected. So hopefully nothing's broken. Um, you're, oh, apparently. Hmm. No, I can hear you just fine. And it, it shows you in the discord as well. Hmm. Mm, your video in oh wait sorry right. i'm reading something else robo baku ai baku ai baku oh uh i don't know if that's still the case am i still muted guys can you hear this yeah everybody they don't let us answer, know is it then. still bad or is it whoa <laughs> are we are we back <laughs> sounds okay now okay can hear him now but it's desynced, desynced. okay well He's lagging do you want to yeah. restart the uh um, I think, I think it might just be that regular desync issue that we have randomly with your audio and video. Do you want me to, uh, start a new video ninja then? Uh, you might just refresh it or something if, you, uh, if there's a way, or you can send me a different link. All right. We'll do it live. Now I'm lagging. Oh, geez. Oh, dear. <laughs> well, let, let, let's, let's just finish this comment and you move okay. on to new comment while I do this. All right. Okay. Uh, yeah. No, I, 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 I'd say, listen, uh, Broken1384, if you are listening. 1394. Uh, oh, 1394. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> if you're still listening, uh, yeah, definitely, definitely go for Vengeance. Uh, just own that one game and just play that one game. If you still can return... The premium edition, definitely do it. Uh, or maybe just sell it on like a secondhand market for a, roughly about the same price you paid. Maybe just like call it a call it a loss and then just like get the vengeance version. I don't know. That's 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 my opinion, anyways. Awesome. And it looks like everything's fine now, according to live chat. So thank you guys. Uh everything's fine now. Okay. Yeah, looks like looks like we're all set. I love it when you know problems go away when you ignore them. That's my main strategy <laughs> for dealing with them. Uh, so moving on to the next one here, uh, we got another comment here from Deathproof eighty seven thirty two who says, "Hello, why have so many channels not been talking about the greatest thing shown, Unicorn Overlord?" Uh, talking about that Nintendo oh, Direct, and okay. and this is a comment that I also responded to, um, mm -hmm. and I think that the reason we didn't really talk about it last week, or, or not last week, but the week before last, uh, was due to the fact that. Uh, there was a trailer shown at that Nintendo Direct, but it didn't mm -hmm. really reveal anything new that we didn't already know. Um, yep. Generally, unless we get like, we, we talk about games when they are first announced, when we find mm -hmm. out that they're getting localized for sure, when we get a solid release date, things of that nature. Um, but like a, an updated trailer or like, hey, there's going to be this cool new character that, you know, like we don't we don't cover a lot of that smaller stuff typically. Yeah. Uh, so that's probably why we didn't cover anything that week. Uh, but otherwise, we have covered Unicorn Overlord a, a several times in the past. Um, so that's, you know, I don't know about everybody else, but that's why we didn't cover it last week or last time. But we will be talking about it uh, soon. So <laughs> You know what? Now that I think about it, I think, it, okay, I, I might be wrong because it's been a while, but I think we covered Unicorn the show before mm -hmm. Death Proof's Common mm -hmm. skipped it yep. last show because yep. nothing new happened. And now we're talking about it today. Yeah. So literally just the one <laughs> time that they watched the show, we didn't talk about the game. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I think that's probably, you know, that, that might be why everybody else isn't talking about it all of the time is because, I mean, it's... It, there's different cycles for talking about games. Like there's obviously the the news things. And then a lot of gaming developers like to, or or maybe not their developers, but the marketing teams like to like drip feed information and little things to you so that you like always feel obligated to talk about them. And that's something I learned a lot when I was doing the JRPG Weekly Update uh, as a one man show a long while back is like, whenever I'd look up like RPG news, it was just diluted with so much like piecemeal information that people were like yeah. just drip feeding to the to the media to like keep 
uh, a general like base level of of exposure at all times and mm-hmm. it's just such a mess of crud to wade through <laughs> <laughs> so so as a result we we came up with some pretty distinct things that we only like to cover when when big things happen is kind of what uh, what I'm getting at. I, I, I like to call that editorial guidelines. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That's a fancy way of saying there's <clears throat> some rules to the chaos. Yes. Well put. Well put. Yeah. But you know how, uh, I think we talked about this before, but you know how like Apple would come up with a new phone and then they'll release like uh, less of variation and they'll release like new colors and then you're just like why well, can't just release all of that at the same time uh-huh. it's the same reason they're not creating a, a new product but they want to stay and stay relevant for as long as they can do you so suppose, they spread out these things do you right? suppose that might be why they do like day one dlc and stuff or like really early on dlc for certain games is to kind of continue to ride that media wave hype to like mm. sell additional, just to have something in the media. I feel like day one DLCs is generally frowned upon that it wouldn't be worth. You would think, or... you would think, but there, there is a prevailing like notion that no, that you know any any news, even bad news, is good news, right? I think it depends. It really I, I think does. we talked about it too. It You're depends. right. We did talk about we did talk yeah. about that notion as it relates to yeah. like whether it's in favor of like the yeah. consumer or not. So it depends yeah. who's pissed off at you. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it depends on who who you're pissing off. If you're pissing off the fans, no. If you're yeah. pissing off other people to rally the fans to defend you, then yes. Yeah. All right. Um, so mm-hmm. before we dive <laughs> into that rabbit hole again, we do have another voicemail <laughs> to listen to. Uh, so I'll go ahead and play that. And if you at home listening would like to join in, uh, leave us a voicemail. You may do so at 785-337-3805. Or you can send us a voicemail file to uh, hitpoint at superderekrpgs.com. And here's uh, one that the very beginning, unfortunately, got a little bit cut off by some like lost dr- uh, audio. So I've tried to fix it up a little bit but i'm not sure who this one came from so let's try giving it a listen when i lost my my power it reset my my thing hang on a second oh i was like is this a silence yep (laughs) well thank you the most the most professional podcast on all of youtube everybody uh we're so polished i love us i need a i need a, a, a ups up here apparently hmm all right, let's try this in right now. Hey guys, I'm recently came up with this cool plan to tackle my backlog of games. I was wondering what you think of it. I got it from this YouTube channel. He made the comment of treating your backlog like a uh, video game rental store, you know, like a blockbuster. And when he said that, it kind of like resonated with me. And so every week I rent one of my games and I try it out for like three to four days. If by that time I just am not feeling it, then I return the game and I choose another game the following week. But if I like the game, then I keep playing it until I just get tired of it or I actually complete the game. So anyway, I was just wondering if you guys have your own ideas on how to tackle your backlog. So far, it's been going pretty well. I'm doing Legend of Dragoon right now. I'm mm. hoping to tackle a lot of the good games I've always wanted to play but never had a chance to. Great show. I hope to see more from you guys and uh, catch you later. Bye. So that was a super cool one. Um, Thank I, you. I do have a video where I dove into uh, strategies for tackling your backlog. Uh, it's called the uh, beat RPGs and defeat your backlog. The super Derek way <laughs> uh, parts one and two. Um, mm-hmm. And, and I think that the biggest one that I have that I, that I can say worked the best for me is to just play one game at a time. If you can, if you can swing that uh, or, or maybe one RPG at a time, and then like mix in other games like platformers or shooters or whatever else to kind of like give you a palate cleanser or something, but only focus on one RPG and try to come back to it and schedule yourself time to play it. Uh, Cause anything not lost will, anything not saved will be lost as they say. Hmm. No, that that's super smart. And whoever sent us that voicemail, if you are listening right now, please, uh, 
write in a comment just to let us know because as you can hear that we couldn't quite catch your name but thank you so much for sending us that voicemail yeah that was a really good uh strategy there i like the idea <laughs> of that rental like one yeah, yeah it's, it sounds fun it's like you know, it's a little make-believe it's kind of it's kind of cute I kind of want to like I think put in like a little kiosk in my office and like just scan <laughs> exactly. it in, and scan exactly. it out. Like part of me, that was the mental image that I had when they were describing. <laughs> it. <laughs> I was like, "That's that's kind of cute." Right? I love Get it. This little rental store at home. Um, I I I don't think it will work for me personally because I've got this um issue or syndrome called uh being a streamer. Yeah. And so basically if for anyone who has ever streamed and played a game before and having to communicate and chat with your well chat uh your gameplay will extend by somewhere between 20% to like 100%. Um especially if you're very talkative. If you're like me, it's closer to 100%. <laughs> so like a game that should have taken like 60 uh, 60 hours would take like 100 plus hours for me um for various reasons. And you know, a, a lot of times I like skipping the uh audio or like the dialogue so I just don't really care. Uh, but then like chat would get mad be like oh come on don't skip it the voice acting so good i'm like fine we'll listen <laughs> through the lines and it, it's like watching a movie with somebody it's just like you can't just like do like the thing that you want to i do. know everybody's like, getting upset on. with you because they're like you're talking during the movie and you're like dude it's my show <laughs> <laughs> thank you um, <laughs> thank you but um yeah but so that won't work for me but yeah I, I'll, I'll say this um just in response to the question i think fundamentally it depends on why you have a backlog to begin with different people have different reasons uh some people just take too long like me uh, other people just don't have time to game in general, and yet mm -hmm. they keep buying new games. Yeah, like me. Um, but yet other people just have commitment issues. Like I know someone who like Baku. Just like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> fair. <laughs> if it was entirely up to me, I would play like three, four games at a time. Uh, and uh, but but I will try to finish them as lo as long as I don't hate them. I will try to finish it. Yeah. yeah. You know, some you know, people are like, yeah, I'm not feeling it. I don't want to play anymore. Like, even if I'm not feeling a game, I will see to it to the end. How long will that take? I don't know, but I, I will finish it. <laughs> I think it's also really worth noting, uh, and you kind of touched on that too, is that uh, what what do you consider like crossing off an item in the backlog? Because like, if you play a game and you don't like it, oh, yeah. I feel like you should be able to cross it off. Like, like mm -hmm. if, if Dragon yeah. Warrior 2 is on your backlog, go ahead and cross that off right now because it's so... <laughs> broken unless you're playing on a uh, game boy advance or game uh, game boy color because the original the original nes cartridge is so so busted please avoid <laughs> avoid that version every other version is fine but that one. yes just that that's just not that one <clears throat> okay no, you're right i i think if you have no intention to ever go back you're free to cross it off you know when you brought up that question i i thought you meant like replay Oh, like no. to what extent do you finish the game? Do you com oh, consider no, complete? No, I, you know, I, I'm a, I'm a one and done kind of guy at this mm. point. It used to be back in the day. I was trained by my poorness <laughs> to, <laughs> to play the same game over and over. Cause mm -hmm. that's what I could afford to do. Um, yeah. cause like, you know, back when mom and pop are like, Hey, it's your birthday. Here's one game. See you next year. Like, okay, cool. This is the this is my game. I am going to yes. play my game forever now. <laughs> <laughs> By the end of the NES, I had like six games maybe, and that was uh, probably a lot compared to a lot of other people. Um, yeah. And so you had to like get to like really know those games. Nowadays, mm -hmm. I'm an adult. I have <laughs> I have disposable <laughs> income and I get oh to like God. buy the stuff that I would like to play. And as a result, I have poor impulse control and a backlog. So uh, aren't, aren't games cheaper too? like uh, with adjusted to oh yeah. adjusted, adjusted to for inflation? Value? Yeah, inflation. <laughs> games yeah. are cheaper too. Like okay. they used to be more expensive. All right. I'm going to yeah. I think I've brought this up once before. Um, but let me, let me do a little thing here. Um, 
are you, <sighs> ask, are you doing a poll? No, no, no. Uh, I'm going to no. ask you a question. Okay. Uh, in a, in a moment. Uh, okay. okay. So I'm looking up some information real quick. You asking, you're going to ask me a question based on like adjusted value. Is that yeah. it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Listen, I, I had an econ background. Doesn't mean I just know these things. <laughs> I know. I know. Okay. So, <laughs> okay. So <clears throat> Chrono Trigger. Okay. How much do you think, uh, the MSRP of Chrono Chrono Trigger would be in today's money, adjusted for inflation. Well, how much was it back then? Back then, uh, uh -huh. eighty dollars. Eighty dollars U.S. Yeah. Holy! Even the sticker price is higher than games today. I know. I wow. know. Wow. <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, and and it came out on what year? It came out in nineteen ninety five. Okay, so the eighties is about triple the value. Oh my God! Hold on! Hold on! Hold on! Happy Chrono Trigger Day, everybody! It came Wait, out on March 11, 1995. <gasps> what? Today is Chrono Trigger Day? Holy cow! <laughs> <laughs> wow! Hey, happy Chrono Trigger Day, everybody! That's wow. cool! Welcome wow. to now in the 90s! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's been, what, 20, about 20 years since it came out? No, 30, 30 years? 30 years. <laughs> 30 years. <laughs> so 40 years ago is about triple the price. So I want to say 80 of uh, today's dollar, probably 190. Mm, not quite, but 160. Not quite. 161. Oh, 160. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So imagine spending 160 bucks on a, on a video game today and it was a 25 hour experience. Wow, you would yeah. you would have to you would have to unlock all those endings to justify it. <laughs> so, yeah, just for like a little bit of um, just a little bit of uh, context and like what it was like in the nineties. Mm -hmm. Then again, people also had a bit more disposable income than they do today, uh, relative, uh, just mm -hmm. based off of like how much housing has gone up over yeah. time and such. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's it's That's pretty crazy. nuts. Wow, I, I learned something new today. Yeah, I learned that. Chrono Trigger came out 30 or 29 years ago. No, no uh, yeah, 29 years ago today. Holy cow. And, and it was $80 sticker price. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I did not know that. I thought it was going to be like more or less 60, like maybe 70, but not 80. It was more like the Wild West back in those days, especially wow. on uh, cartridge based media where you had the flash cartridges or the, the flash ROMs that were. Um, they were a lot more variable in price. And so they would pass those costs onto the consumer as the mm -hmm. games ballooned in price. So yeah. RPGs used to cost a lot more. Uh, yeah. So like, whereas like a Mario game would probably be like closer to like 50. Did I tell you, I, I have a business strategy class and then we had a very healthy conversation about the console war, especially in the PS3 era. That was super interesting. Really? Um, but but well, I, I I can I can tell you about it later. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, we should probably or if move anybody, on. If anybody if anybody would like to hear about it, maybe we'll talk about it next time. Yeah. Uh, so let us know in the comments. Yeah. Thank you so much for that awesome voicemail. Uh, led Thank to you. a really fun discussion. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to uh, our next section. Was going to be updates to previous uh, games, so like yes. updates and DLCs and such. All that fun stuff. Let's start off with uh, this breakout hit that no one expected. Uh, Psy Games Grand Blue Fantasy Relaying. Psy Games just announced that various free and paid DLCs are coming for the game, uh, but we'll only focus on the free ones. Not because we're cheap, but because the free ones are the ones that are interesting. Uh, let me explain. The paid ones are all just like, <clears throat> you know, extra items to help your game go oh. along. So it's like, eh, you know, it's whatever. Which I kind of respect them for. Like the paid stuff are just kind of like throwaway items to make your game easy if you feel like doing it. But the free ones are like the content stuff. Uh, okay. So not the other way around. Um, yeah. So on March 14th, they're going to release a new quest called The Final Vision. Uh, so that's going to be like one of three DLCs in a roadmap. In April, they're going to release two playable characters, um, and I'm going to butcher these names because I, I have no idea how they're pronounced. But it's a uh, Seraphon and Twi Twiggin. <laughs> Is it Twiggin? 
T W E Y N Twin. It's got to be some language. Like maybe like Twin. Um, I don't know. Maybe Twin. Yes. So, <laughs> and then last but not least, in May they'll have one additional playable character named uh, Sendophone. So uh, pretty cool. We do have a trailer for uh, just the final vision, uh, which is the uh, the DLC is coming out in three days and it's free. Uh, we can take a look at it. Okay, let me pull that up here. <laughs> I haven't streamed in so long that like <laughs> I can't talk on a mic. <laughs> yeah, cool. no one expected this game to sell that many. But then like I think Pals World came out as like the even bigger like surprise <laughs> hit, right? But yeah, you know, if Pals this World did super happen, well. Yeah. This did way better than I think even the developers thought would happen. Uh, and mainly because this game series was uh, based on like a mobile game and then and not even one that was particularly like you it's know, kind of a multimedia popular. franchise at this point though, isn't it? Oh, oh it absolutely is because it like, has an anime, it has a mobile game. It's, got the, it has it's also got a fighting game series now, right? It has a fighting game series, yes. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. So I I think they did super well. They took a long time to develop this game, but I feel like they did the game justice. Uh for what it is anyway. nice uh their, their first time their first like like standalone rpg that isn't premium i think they did a pre admirable job um yeah so uh again that's coming out uh in just three days on march 14th and then there are two more dlcs coming out in april and may respectively that's pretty sick i think yeah. that'll go a long way like <clears throat> the, the free dlcs i hope that'll go a long way toward the people who are saying that like Oh, you could beat the game in like 10 hours or whatever. <laughs> so I, I mean, guess I'm not playing the game until May. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. May as well I wait a my, longer. I looked at my schedule. Yeah. May sounds about right. <laughs> All right. So next up, we got uh, uh, something from <clears throat> NeoWiz who have announced that they'll be adding a new DLC pack for their rhythm game, DJ Max Respect v or is that five five uh five that five. will contain 10 Respect. songs 10 songs and <laughs> you're like why are we talking about this it's because they're falcom songs from east falcom. and trails happy Pi day on 3.14 all right enjoy that guys yeah. uh some some classic falcom goodness coming to dj max respect five respect <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, the next one is pretty fun. <clears throat> so this, so Bandai Namco announced that the Hololive VTuber Minato Aqua would be featured as a playable character in uh, Star Wars Online Last Recollection uh, with the free update to version 1.15. So Aqua is a uh, Hololive VTuber. She is like famously a huge fan of the Star Wars Online series, which is pretty cool that... Uh, Bandai Namco decides to put her in as a playable character, but not only is she a playable character, she has like a mini campaign and also uh, she voices the character and it's free. Mm. Uh, that's the important part. It's free. They yeah. could have charged for it, but they didn't. It's free. So um, in order to recruit Aqua, you have to uh, find her in Trading Street after the main quest in Chapter 3 and then just complete her really quest and boom, there you go. You get to have an additional playable character. I, and I think she also comes with like all the extra scenes and stuff, just like any other playable characters uh, in there too. So it's not like a, um, you know, a cheap like, oh yeah, reskin. Here you go. There, there's a character. Like no, they they written new lines. They written a new quest. They recorded all her lines. Um, mm -hmm. So it's just like a full flesh character you get to play in the game. So a hey, much respect to Bandai Namco. Always. Uh, regardless of what kind of content it is, I just feel like when a company is willing to do these free updates, uh, yeah. more power to them. So, uh, so check it out if you haven't done so already and you are a Hall Life fan. Uh, Star Wars Online uh, Lost Recollection is already available everywhere. Baku, I've had a brainwave. I think, what? I think I figured out finally 
how mm-hmm. Super Derek RPGs can be he- can have his own Super Derek RPG. <laughs> Wait, what? I just need to become a VTuber and also incredibly successful. Uh, I and mean, that's it. That's I, all there I, is I, to I, it. I, I I know a guy. If you wanna you wanna get a model done, okay. Cool. Uh, <laughs> let, let us know in the comment if you want to see a Super Derek VTuber model. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I want to see this. Oh, I want to see this. All right, and then last but not least, we have Persona Three Reload uh, that uh, is getting a, a little bit of an update here. Atlas have announced during their recent Xbox partner preview that Persona 3 Reload will be getting a paid DLC called Episode Igus in September that will include the answer from Persona 3 Fest. Yes. Which is, honestly, we kind of called it. Um, I think that there were some rumors that were going around about that, and and it all kind of jives. Now, this is kind of a divisive topic, I think, because some people think that it's kind of uh, shady, you know, and I cannot completely disagree. But I will say what does soften the blow somewhat is knowing that this second campaign was initially released as like its own separate thing in Japan, as opposed to being bundled in Mm -hmm. with FAS. So Mm -hmm. uh, as a result, I don't feel quite so bad about it, but I know that others are a little bit salty. Um. Let's go ahead and take a look at the trailer, though, because this was this, is, this looks pretty cool. <clears throat> I think it beats them releasing like um, Persona Three Reload Fest in oh like God, six months, right? <laughs> I win. Yeah, this is this Ooh. does beat the alternative. <clears throat> I will say that Metis, a uh, character that is exclusive to the answer, is a pretty fun character. She's kind of neat. Um, mm-hmm. On the other hand. I hate the rest of the answer. <laughs> it's, yeah, I, heard I hope it they wasn't fix it. Great. I, I don't honestly. I don't even know what they could do to fix it because a lot of what I had problems with had little to do with the gameplay, and most to do with the character development, or rather, walking back all of the character development of everybody. Super frustrating. Maybe maybe I'll change my mind if Atlas sponsors another video though. Did you hear that, Atlas? <laughs> Did just, you hear that? I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I. Mm, I mean, I like, I like what I saw so far. I hope they will make some changes. I know because this, this will, if I do play this, this would truly Wait. be the only thing that so I have not. Wave three, wave one is of the of the of the expansion pass. Oh, yeah. So they have an expansion pass, and then they have like wave one, wave two. Yeah, see, it's just nothing. It's just BGM. Um, and then wave two is like uniforms. Like I think uh, the okay. velvet room uniforms. Okay, yeah. so and they're kind of like is, yeah, they're 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 kind of a thing. Yeah, that we talked about earlier. <laughs> okay. Yeah. How to stay relevant over time. 100%. By okay. drift feeding you with DLCs and drift feeding you with news and yeah. staying on the news say, cycle for as long as you can. One of these things is not like the others. <laughs> okay. Now, now do you understand why we don't talk about a thing all the time when there is like a small news? Like, I'm not going to come back and be like, hey guys, let's talk about P3 again because they are releasing BGMs. Woo! Mm, and then like yeah. next month, like, hey, we're talking about Persona 3 like again because they're releasing new costumes. It's one thing if like you are a publisher of like a online magazine or something. Yeah. And like, you just put out a little article blurb. is whatever yeah, yeah a little article sure whatever but i'm not going to put out a, like a video every week talking about it um we, we don't have the kind of time to do that <laughs> no <laughs> all right we do um, have some stuff coming out this week though that or or one thing rather that's pretty cool. yeah well it's not coming out this week but it came out already oh and so okay mm. so a little, just a little disclaimer for everyone there 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 are no new releases this coming week i'm so okay. sorry come back again next week for like four new releases though uh but 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 uh we do uh, gotta talk about the game that we didn't cover uh last show uh or last week really because we didn't have a show last week which is uh 
Unicorn Overlord! Hey, Only the you best came from the oh my god, it's from the presentation! Oh, oh hang on, hang on, do that again. Let me let me let me show here. Let's there we go. Look at that. Whoa, Full screen Unicorn Baku. That is Overlord. Absolutely okay, that's cool. <laughs> All right. It's actually really cool. The um, they did a really good job with the limited edition, uh, just so they know that we're not skipping the game because we hate it. I mean, I bought this with my money. This is not sent to me. Okay, <laughs> Atlas did not send me this. I bought this with my own money because I believe in the game, but also because Vanillaware uh, is quite nice. Heads so, up, everybody! That was sent to Baku by Amazon. After he sent Amazon a lot of money. <laughs> this is uh, GameStop. GameStop. But oh, yeah, GameStop. Okay. Close enough. Yeah. Um, I don't know why I bought it from GameStop. Anyways, um, so if anyone's ever played Ogre Battle before, then you would be pretty familiar with the way that this game plays. It is a real life strategy in like a battle stage, right? Where you yeah. can move your squats around through the map to capture the post, so to speak. So you send them to different like enemy castles and you capture them and fight whatever enemy station there, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, that component is real time, right? Whenever like two units collide on a map, it, they enter this little like battle sequence. Uh, and however you set up your squad uh, will determine how they go about attacking on what range and et cetera. So uh, it's pretty interesting. It's a pretty unique like battle mechanics that we haven't really seen since like games like Ogre Battle. Uh, it's a little old school, but I like what they did with it. They are completely like redoing this for like to be more um, palatable yeah. in 2024. So I thought that was super cool of them to kind of like bring back the old school, but make it relevant. Right. That's how I, I that's that's how I feel like all the retro like inspired games should try to do like Figure out what works and then make it palatable for like the today's age and not just like repeat and copy whatever it just was and think that it will work. Like that's not how it works. People I mean, sometimes change, right? sometimes it works. <laughs> name a name a thing. Name a thing that's new and not a not a remaster. Name name a thing. Oh, I, I need to hear this. So I was gonna say Sea of Stars. Okay. I think though they did change up enough. They that absolutely changed up. That they changed up a lot. I was, yeah. That's what I was gonna say. I was gonna say that because it did. It did employ a lot of things that were one to one, mm -hmm. but they didn't stop there. So never mind. Yeah. I, I, I no, retract see, my statement. And that's exactly what I'm saying though. Like Sea of Stars, the perfect example. Like yeah. they took what worked. They understood what worked. It wasn't just a mere copy. And then whatever they felt like needed changes, they made meaningful changes and they released a, a, just a brilliant game that made sense. And it's not just a, a product of the bygone era, right? So I, I respect that. And I feel like Unicorn Overlord, it's more or less that same deal. They took what they really studied it. They know what was so brilliant about it. They they take that formula and then they changed it up so that it's, you know, this this amazing looking game well packaged uh this game features 60 playable characters and over 60 classes of units which is quite a bit uh ask anyone who plays strategy rpg let's take a little trailer because they do have a yeah. launch uh trailer that we all right get. all right we'll pull that up here God, this game is so I know. beautiful. Holy cow, man. Oh. You know, I... God. This is like the counter example. Whenever, whenever some, whenever I mention like paper doll aesthetics that just don't work, like this is the counter example of like if you put in enough work into that style, you can make it incredible. The problem is that like most people who do that paper cutout style like stop after like the first drawing. This is beautiful and I love it. It's not just like this is like fully animated. Holy cow, I love it. They they got this unique aesthetics 
that they can make it work. So yeah. like 13 Sentinel is like a futuristic looking game. Yeah. This is obviously not. This is like middle east like middle age and like, you know, night and magic kind of deal, like fantasy setting. Yeah. Uh still works. It's just when it's great art, it's great art. <laughs> <laughs> and this is oh, no, this is great art. Yeah. Oh my god. Dude. Oh my <laughs> like look at that. <laughs> like even the cooking looks incredible. <laughs> <laughs> they are like okay, I I think P5 is one of the best looking like UIs that I've seen in like very stylish UI. Very avant-garde for sure. Yeah, I feel like I feel like VanillaWare is like the only other company that I've seen where like they spend so much time on their UIs. Oh man. Like all the little detail. Yeah. Uh, it, it's just amazing. I, I, you have to play a vanilla wear game to like understand what I'm saying too. Like it, it's, it's hard to explain. <laughs> like you can pick out all the little artistic detail in there. Uh, and, and there's like a good reason why they did it. You know, yeah. you, you can tell that they've spent a lot of time mulling over design decisions. Just everywhere. painstaking. Yeah. Or, oh, just it, gorgeous. It is, it is a work of art. It is not put together, like, just for the payout, right? Yeah. Um, so, uh, this game is immediately available for PS4, 5, Switch, and Xbox Series. And yes, for anyone who is asking, this is the limited edition box. Uh, you don't... <laughs> I was about to say, you don't have to expand my window. Nope, again, I do. Here you go. This is this is indeed... Uh, it, it comes with the card game, uh, and it's... it's Quite nice. Um, I bought this day one because when I saw this, I was like, done deal. Uh, give it to me. I, I don't even know what this game plays like, but I don't care. Um, I, I didn't even know what the game was about. Yeah. Actually. I still don't <laughs> like know. It's just, it looks good, though. It's beautiful. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I didn't even know that was going to be like a tactical RPG. I just I, We just saw the art. Oh, when, yeah. When, in the initial release and on day one, I'm like, done. Just send it to me. I don't care. <laughs> Um, so, uh, I, I should bring this up too, and this is related to what we talk about with, uh, the way in which they create this game. It's very different from like a corporate owned game developer, uh, or studio, I think. Uh, and oh, here's yeah. the reason why. Okay. Well, let's just bring this up because it's related news. A couple of days ago, VanillaWare, uh, C CEO, uh, George, uh, Kamitani, tweeted that the company ran out of development funds for <laughs> Unicorn Overlord, and he had to pay out of pocket to complete the game. Wow. Okay. And you, you've got to, you've got to like almost remember that they are not exactly like a corporate developer. They're yeah. not a Square Enix. They're not a Bandai Namco, even though they, they mess with the best of them. Okay. They're not an Atlas. Okay, they're not a Bandai. They are relatively small. Uh, and the CEO is not at all fiscally responsible. Uh, <laughs> I gotta say. Well. However, uh, I mean, look, if he's but fiscally he took responsible, respons he wouldn't run out. But he took personal responsibility when... He took personal responsibility. And, that, yes, and that's, but, that's pretty sick. Um, that's, that's still good. Um, but more importantly, he took creative responsibility. Yeah. Right. Like he he's creating not not just him, but like his entire office, his entire company, like takes great pride in the product that they produce, and it's not again a thing that's rushed out the door. It's not a thing just to make money, make the money, move on to the next thing. They spend years and years crafting this experience, going into the negatives because they believe in it. The yeah. artistry that goes into this. This is the kind of games that we would love to see more of. Like a, a you know, so well this is a, seasoned an artisan um, game. Yeah, I would say so. I would say so. Because we always talk about like indies, you know, having that creative freedom and they have all these bright ideas, mm -hmm. but then they don't have like the money. Yeah. Whereas like corporates kind on the opposite end, they play everything super safe. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Um, if they don't make like, you know, the, 
don't shatter like expectation as long as it's good enough and it sells that's all that really matters this is somewhere in the middle where they have more funding than a typical indie studio yeah. and more connection. They're an indie who's Atlas. been around the block a few times. Yes. And, but at and the same has, time, yeah, yeah, they don't have that like corporate overlaw and stakeholders telling them, oh, you better come out by now. Uh, otherwise, we're going to lose money. You know, like this is this is it. So if if we want to see more games like this. May I plead to everyone to try and support these endeavors? And that's the reason why I didn't care and I bought this day one because I knew that this is the situation and I want to pay my, I want to. You raise a really good argument. And (laughs) yeah, if you want to see more of this, vote with your wallet. Yeah. Tell people I'll, that you want to see more of this. I'll probably have to snag a copy of my own here, actually, because that, yeah. I, I think you've sold me on it, not just because like the game looks cool, but because you're right. This is the sort of company that I want to throw my money at, um, you know, so yeah. well done. Falcom, more or less the same way, I feel like. Bigger company, but, mm-hmm. you know, more or less the same way. Yeah. All right, so that about right. does it for uh, the games that are coming out, well, that came out last week. <laughs> but we have uh, some new announcements uh, to get through. No, uh, I've been halfway done, guys. I know, guys. This is a long episode. <laughs> it's this, a long show, yeah. It's going to be good, though. Um, starting with Sin Duality Echo of, AD, of American Disability Act. Um <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Uh, Sin Duality Echo of ADA or, or ADA. Okay. Ada, I don't know. Ada, I don't. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Ada, Ada. Uh, Bamco, Bandai Namco have announced that their extraction shooter, Sin Duality Echo of ADA, of, of Ada, Ada, will begin closed beta on uh, the 28th of this month through April Fool's Day, the first. <laughs> Sorry, whenever I see whenever I see April first, it's just like that's April Fool's Day. Yes. Uh, anyone who is interested in participating can sign up at the official website. Beta will be held for PlayStation Five, Xbox Series platforms, and on Steam. Mm-hmm. Uh, we also got a trailer for it as well. Um, so let's check that out. I've actually gone and signed up because I just want to see what the game looks like. I'm actually quite interested in the art direction so what is an extraction rp uh, what was it uh, extraction based shooter extraction shooter what is that uh, I what think is extraction... what even is that think armor core i think I what think. even is that <laughs> and, and i'm waiting and i'm just waiting okay. for people to like scream at me in 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 chat for not knowing what it is uh truly it looks neat. But I'm, I'm not seeing... Uh, uh, I think Titanfall, they say. Yeah. All right. Well, so uh, remember, guys, that uh, we do say that this is also a niche news show in addition to RPGs. Uh, I think... I don't know what this is. But it do, it do look niche, though. I've been told that there are RPG elements in this game. So uh, oh. you do walk around and explore and okay. yada yada. So. All right. Damn, that the, um, um, the, the music is an EDM concert. I was basically. gonna say this is <laughs> this is taking this me back. E- it's an EDM concert, guys. This is this is taking me back to like 2015, guys. Oh jeez. <laughs> there were days when I go to raves. I think it's Ada. I think okay. Ada. Well, Ada. Yeah. Ada. Something. I don't know. Ada. Ada. Yeah. Okay. Ada. Ada. Ada, Ada. (laughs) 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 If if you know, you know. Uh, Yeah, I signed up for it because I thought it looked pretty cool. But we'll see how that plays. I'm pretty cool. Yeah. All right. Next up, Ku. If you have never heard of this fellow or this person before, is that the uh, bald guy in the in the kids show? The bald guy in the kid. Wait, what? Ku. (laughs) Oh, that's (laughs) that's a different thing. This person's name is KU, like K A Y. Um, the creator of the hit fan game Hollow Cure surprised us on Twitter with a new game that they have kept under wraps until now. It is another Hollow Life fan games, and this time it is a side scrolling 
multiplayer beat em up game called Hollow Brick. The X in there is apparently silent. Um, while Hollow Cure is free and will remain that way, it is unclear whether or not this game will cost any money. But this is an official fan game collaboration with uh, Covercore, uh, the owners of Hollow Life, and it will be published under the Hollow Indie brand. Uh, we do have a short trailer for it, so let's take a look. All right, let's give it a go. Let's give it a little gander here. I, I think this is a pretty interesting uh, avenue. Um, and and I, let me explain this. Um, because I see this as like a new trend that's coming. And it may affect how other games may be developed. Like yeah. now companies that don't specialize in games that have like significant amount of ips like under them may look to this model if it works out where they effectively work with like indie developers and provide them with assets and certain rights to ips and then they can develop the game and they'll take a share of the profit uh instead of like deferring to big studio or deferring to themselves to create the games based on the IP. I think it's an interesting partnership that is starting to take form oh. in this space. Uh, I was I was waiting for like the, the gameplay trailer to show me what the game was about, but... Uh, oh, I mean, that, that's just a short teaser, sorry. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> yeah, but it is a multiplayer uh, beat-em-up game. Um, it, it looks pretty interesting. But yeah, I, I think it's, uh, it's an interesting... Someone said Toho model. In some way, yes. In some way, no. So Toho model is more like you can use any of the assets that I've created for free as long as you abide by certain rule, like namely like no nudity and stuff, because mm -hmm. that's just the creator's wish. And people are very good about respecting it. Um, this is a little different. This is more like a for-profit venture where they will subsidize you with some amount of money. They will provide you with... You know, maybe they have like talents who work under them. Mm -hmm. They can lend some voices and make it feel like a fan game plus, you know, yeah. because fan games would just be like me making a game, no affiliation. Uh, if I can maybe grab some sound clips, but they wouldn't be like recorded sound clips for my purpose. Right. Uh, it would just be like random sound clips that I can find and it will be completely free and it has to be completely free. This is different. This is more like you can charge under our label. Yeah. Uh, we will lend you resources. We may even subsidize part of your development, uh, but you will do what you do best, which is creating games. And we'll do what we do best, which is managing our talent and doing literally anything else. Yeah. What um, was, what was, yeah. there was a recent game that got shut down. There was a, fa I mean, it, there was a fan, there were several, but there was a mm -hmm. fan game that recently got shut down by, was it Square Enix or Nintendo or something? A um, game that got shut down? A, a fan game that was going to be coming out, but then they're like, no. Shut down. <laughs> I don't know. Why does this sound familiar? Because it happens every year. Like, it's it's uh, it's an annual thing. I think we talked about it. Our episode was titled, it's... When Will They Learn? And <laughs> It was all about when will fan developers learn to not I, announce games <laughs> before you release them if you're going to do stuff like that. I um, know there was a uh, Bloodborne racing oh, game. Oh, yeah, the that Bloodborne cart. shut down. That was... Well, that, that didn't get shut down per se. He kept the game but changed all the characters. Yeah. So it was no longer... Change out the assets, yeah. Yeah, so it's still... Yeah, it's still releasing. It's just not Bloodborne okay. cart anymore. Yeah. And but I feel, I like, feel there's, like there was another one. Yeah. There are so many others. But anyways, yeah. imagine if in those circumstances, say the Chrono, Chrono Trigger remake that somebody was doing back in 2005, if instead of Square Enix being like, no, shut down... Uh, they said, <laughs> "Hey, that's pretty cool. Here's some money, and uh, and here's Tetsuya Nomura." <laughs> like yeah. they just like <laughs> threw some, there threw you some go. stuff yeah. out there. Yeah. No, just, I I think this is super awesome. Um, just realizing the power of like indie and fan, um, feel content is more grassroots, if you will. yeah yeah you know like it's pretty there's, neat. there's fan support already like like because... licensing the the ips out to indie developers for yeah yeah and yeah. that's neat that's super cool yeah so uh and and that's 
one that the reason why I wanted to talk about it, other than me just being a Hollow Knight fan and I'm like trying to spread the love, and also KU is pretty cool. Uh, but the more important thing is I feel like this model could be the future. You may see more of this, uh, especially for IPs where the IP holder don't have ways to create games themselves. Yeah, although a lot of anime like houses, like they don't, they own the anime IP, they own the manga IP, but they don't own anything. They don't have like ways to create games. Right? Yeah, obviously um, they would have to go through some process of like vetting the developers mm -hmm. to make sure that yeah. they're not going to put out something that's going to like destroy their reputation. Mm -hmm. but, it would be all in the claws, you know, yeah. many clauses. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Final but review sign work. off and all kinds of yeah. stuff, I'm sure. It but could, it could definitely work. So For yeah. Sure. Um it's gonna come out sometime this month, by the way, this game. Uh we'll see more soon. Uh they're really good about um giving you just enough to um get you wanting the game. Mm -hmm. Um, but also not so far out that's like seven months from now, right? It's like it's literally just later on this month they'll release it. So we'll see what that looks like. All right. So next up, Reika, uh, yeah, yeah, Reika Studios announced a new indie creature collecting RPG called Home of the Yokai, where the player will play as a yokai keeper whose mission is to maintain harmony between humans and yokai. While the creature collection aspect may be pretty similar to the likes of Pokemon, the battle system is completely different, and uh, we've got a trailer to showcase that difference. Any minute now. <laughs> there it is. Yes. Look at that. Yeah, it looks it looks really cool. Uh, so all the all the yokai's, uh, well, based on yokai's, <laughs> which mm. are like. Japanese folklore myth mythical creatures if you will sure yeah it's a bunch yeah. of like Japanese chupacabras <laughs> basically <laughs> but they evolve or I don't know what's the evolve equivalent in this in this game hmm. no one I don't want to say evolve but yeah they they have a yeah but this is the battle you oh, know okay. it's not like the one to one and like, like you just scale battles skill. yeah this is kind of cool it almost looks I, like I it think... could be like tower defense or something. Yeah, I... yeah, yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. Um, the visuals are very pretty. Mm -hmm. It does have a bit of that paper doll aesthetic that I'm not a super big fan of, but it doesn't look but like they have. It's um... done. It looks like it's nicely done. Um, it's, it's got. And a, it's small enough it that called? it's fine. It's got a. Um... What's the word that I'm going for? It's got a, a fairy a, tale book kind of vibe. So. Yeah, like a pop up book kind of where yeah, everything's yeah, yeah. kind of paper. Everything looks like a paper cutout. So as a yeah. result, like the characters don't look out of place. Yeah, it I, becomes more of a stylistic choice versus a like financial like, one. <laughs> yeah, financial one. Yeah. So yeah. I'm I, now whether or not it is uh, truly a financial choice, uh, as long as it doesn't look like it. That's all that really matters. Yeah. Well, yeah. this looks pretty dang cool. Um, all things considered. Uh, and it looks like it's coming out on the 10th of July, uh, coming to PC via Steam. All right. Next up, we've got Idea Factory just announced the international release date and details for the upcoming Neptunia game called Neptunia Game Maker R Revolution, the spin-off game where players will play as older Neptune, uh, who is an alternative version of the main character we've seen from the main series. So this older Neptune uh, is actually not like just a grown-up version of the uh, Neptune that we used to see, but rather it's an older version from like an alternative universe who's like a wholly different like being. Um, oh. I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's hard to Alternate explain. universe Neptune. Yeah. They, they both exist. Their personality is just a, ever so slightly different. Um, but they're not the same person. Mm -hmm. It's not like past future self kind of deal. Gotcha. Uh, so uh, this game is kind of interesting because uh, this game series, uh, not this particular game, but the series itself centers around a character named Neptune who uh, 
it's supposed to be uh, representing like the Sega game console. I, I forgot which one. Sega. Oh, well, uh, the Sega Neptune, which was going to be like Neptune? the Saturn, right? Oh, I, I forgot. Yeah, it's like a follow to the Saturn, but they renamed I, I it or something. I think so. I don't know. I, I think so. So she's supposed to recommend Sega. Uh, she's supposed to represent Sega. And then her three other like goddess countries in this like game industry world where they're constantly competing. And that's where the whole basis of the world comes from. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, it's Nintendo, um, which you have like the Wii and the what have you. And then you have Xbox and then you have Sony and then you have Sega. So these four nations are in these in this console war, right? In the mm -hmm. game industry, which is the world. Uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, it plays on a lot of these tropes. This time, uh, Neptune will travel with three other goddesses that aren't Sony, aren't Nintendo, and aren't Xbox. Uh, these three goddesses' name is Pippa, Jaga, and Radio. What do you think these three uh, quote unquote failure console goddesses are named after? What do I, you think? Derek? I wrote down three. Because yeah. when I was trying to figure this out, I was like, I, I, they're a stretch, but I was thinking Pippin. <laughs> I was thinking the the Apple Pippin? Yes, it is the Apple Pippin. I was okay. Leaning toward the Apple Pippin with that one. Yes. Okay. You'd be right. Uh huh. Jaga, uh, which is J A G A A, sounds kind of mm -hmm. like the Atari Jaguar. It is. All right. And what no. do you think radio is? So, I mean, it sounds like a weird like way of saying like uh, video, but it's not. Uh, I don't think so. I think it might be the <laughs> Wii U, but it I is don't know. Not. Okay. All right. I got I got one wrong. What was it supposed got, to be? Do you want do you want to take two more guesses? Oh, two more guesses. You? Oh, you get two. Okay. You get three guesses total. Okay, okay. 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 So, re radio. Um, it sounds it's probably something weird. Um, <laughs> it's got to be something really weird. I mean, if, if, it's, if it's like an obscure failure of a console, then yeah, it's, it's got to be. I wonder if it's like weird. a Japanese exclusive failure console, though. That's my. I opinion. don't know if the. I, I thought they had it in the States. It might um, be Japan only. Yeah, I. I played it, but. I'm drawing a blank, but uh, what you got? What is it? It's actually 3DO. Okay. Ah. Yep. 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 The 3DO yep. was definitely a thing here in the States. Uh, it was. <laughs> <sighs> I actually wanted a 3DO just so I could play Lucian's Quest. Uh, it's the oh. only RPG. <laughs> it's the only one on the console. So it's hard to really uh, justify, justify the cost. It. I thought exactly. it was really expensive too, wasn't it? It's not cheap. Yeah. I thought it was like $600. Yeah, and and so is Lucian's Quest. So it's like, do I do I want that or Panzer Dragoon Saga or or <laughs> or how about neither? <laughs> I I prefer just cash, please. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Emulation. So this is pretty cool. <laughs> Emulation. Yeah, this is pretty cool. The the failure console goddess, and we do have a trailer that we can look at. Okay, let's just give so that people know what game we're look. talking about. All right, here we go. Yes, this is older Neptune. Sick motorbike. Taller, long hair, less annoying. And then the, the three failure goddesses in the back. The <laughs> failure consoles. I like that they're keeping the theme. I, I do hope that they will change up the gameplay. I see a lot of... I see a lot of potential from, like, um, this game developer, which is uh, Kampa Heart. Uh -huh. They do have a good amount of is that fan the... service oh, that's yeah. just in by their nature. Sure. But their more recent games like Death End Request and stuff, they actually are really good games that are just really good games. Um, and I almost feel like they're insistent to have these like um, fan service and or maybe just reluctance to go full on into developing a very serious um game to be taken very seriously it's like holding them back because man uh, i still sing praises to death and request uh anytime um so yes from the same studio as death and request rad yeah all right all so right. Uh, and that's gonna come out uh sometime in may 
for PS4, 5, and the Switch. Sweet. Yes. Uh, so it was recently uh, Mario Day, March 10th. Uh, and Nintendo gave us the release date for the remastered version of Paper Mario, the Thousand Year Door that they had initially announced uh, and unveiled back in September of last year. Uh, yes. And we have a trailer for it as well, so let's check it out. Yes. Yes. I still think this game looks incredible. Dude, this game was um, so much fun. Uh, the original release. I, I may just play it now because, you know, I, I was I, I was very much like in the not Mario phase oh, but yeah, with yeah. like the recent like RPG I remake think, and this. Mm -hmm. I, I think we like all had high a, time. I feel like we all had that not Mario phase. <laughs> I feel like it's high time to to come back. This game, this game looks amazing. Yeah. Yeah. What were you saying about paper cuts of uh, paper dolls? Yeah, I mean, hey, it's that it's a choice. That's for sure. It's a it's a choice. Yeah, uh, I kind of dig it, and this <laughs> is such a fun game. I actually yeah. recently played a little bit of. Uh, was it this one or was it? Oh, it might not have been this one. Was this? I, I played Thousand Year Door. No, Thousand Year Door was the Wii one. Mm -hmm. There was another Paper Mario. Was it? Was this the 64 version or was? I have no clue, honestly, because I okay. was. Because the know, GameCube one Mario. was great. <laughs> the GameCube was great. And so was the 64 releases. I can't keep them straight anymore. Um, but after that, I didn't really care for them. This was super fun, though. I mean, say what you want about Nintendo, man. This is quality stuff. Oh, my God. This game looks phenomenal. Yes, dude. I am so happy to see more Mario RPGs getting like remade and re-released mm -hmm. because when, oh man, when the developers behind the Mario and Luigi stories went under, um, I was really concerned about losing yet another uh, RPG developer and like franchise entirely as a result. Mm. Um, yeah, I think well, this was no the- no worries. Uh, yeah. Nintendo knows the value of it now and they know it sells and they'll never let it go again. Oh, is there Un more? Until oh, such time that it I think this sell. was the GameCube version. That's right. Oh, yeah? I think this is the GameCube one. Mm. Yeah. I th but the they should do the 64 version soon, too. Why did they skip the 64 version? Or is... I have no idea. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm probably wrong. Anyways, All right. they are, regardless, super fun. You can skip them. <laughs> um, yeah, anyways, uh, that's coming out May 23rd for the Nintendo Switch exclusively. Nice. Who would have the... guessed? Who, who would have who thought? Or the Super Nintendo Switch, am I right? It could be the Super Nintendo Switch. <laughs> I mean, eventually. <laughs> Eventually. Because because we all know that the Super Nintendo Switch will be backwards compatible with the original Nintendo Switch. Absolutely. And we all also know <laughs> that it's also called the Super Nintendo Switch. Absolutely. The Super 100%. Nintendo Switch. 100%. Also, we all know that I'm just pulling this out of my butt. So, um, yeah. Next one. What you got? All right. Binary Haze. It's just announced that their newest title, Ender Magnolia Bloom in the Mist, will launch in early access for PC via Steam. The early release will only feature one village in the first four areas of the game. The company plans to have the game remain in early access for about six months to a year while taking in user feedback. Mm, okay. At release, uh, the game will be made available also on PS4, 5, uh, Switch, and Xbox Series. So to some, they will do early release. They will wait six months to a year. And then once it's good to go, they'll release it on basically all the platforms. Uh, Want to just take a look at the trailer real quick, just so people remember what I was talking about? Uh, Sure. Yeah. And uh, Magnolia, this game looks, another game that looks incredible with art that almost rivals uh, Vanilla Vanillaware, Ware. in my yeah. opinion. Yeah, it's just a gorgeous looking game um not 
ex as extensive as uh, a vanillaware game to be sure but also doesn't take as many years to come out with a game um yeah it's beautiful, beautiful music beautiful art beautiful story uh i couldn't recommend ender lilies enough to people uh it was an extremely extremely well-made game so i'm really looking forward to this end of magnolia which is uh people keep saying it's a sequel but i don't know if it's a true sequel or it's simply like a game in the same style and art you yeah. know what i mean yeah. like I think sequel implies certain like con continuity. Yeah, kind of how yeah. Chrono Cross is not a sequel to Chrono Trigger, even though. I'm sorry. We're not going there. We're not going there. Okay. <laughs> it's not a sequel, but it's a sequel, but it's not a sequel, but it's a sequel. They never made up their mind. Um. Anyway, <laughs> I'm sorry. I got chrono triggered just now. <laughs> you did. <laughs> but um oh, uh anyways, uh <laughs> this game is entering <laughs> early access on the 25th again uh in the full release. Uh should be sometime in 2024, although they did say that they could be in early release for as long as a full year, so that would take us into 2025, but they are expecting to full release uh this year. Now here's the question that i want to raise with this particular game again with like the way that they're doing business i think it's pretty interesting mm -hmm. and i wonder if more companies can take advantage of a similar uh structure they're basically using early access as like play testing slash like um qa and whatnot right by having like the mass amount of people who are on steam to uh, basically test the game for you and 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 give you feedback and they have had some success doing something like this for uh ender lilies too uh what i did notice is i don't think they did that for the other game which uh didn't sell too well hmm. so i i think they might be coming back to form and be like okay maybe part of our success was because we did this early access release it by piece took a lot of feedback while we released it changed it as we go uh, and then once we came off like a really good polished product, then we call it done. Um, yeah. And all the meanwhile, people can play test it, uh, you know, however they like and get feedback. And these people are paying customers. Like yeah. they, they put money in to play this game to give the feedback, right? That's yeah, the nature I, of the early access. I I'm, a, I'm a little bit torn yeah. on that mm -hmm. practice because, I mean, QA mm -hmm. tester is like a typically a paid position. Um, but I also understand that it's not something everybody can really do, but it's like, yeah, I mean, if you're like a fan dynamic or you're Square Enix, you have more than enough money to it's, hire like seven teams over. Yeah. It's more, um, it's more, I'm, I'm fine with it, I guess for an indie who's like yeah. still getting their feet under them, but eventually you would hope that that would be something they would pay for. <laughs> <laughs> well, the I mean, the other thing is just like there's QA. But getting community involvement though would be nice, right? Well, yeah, that's what I was get, about to get to. Like, there's yeah. QA, which is quality, but then there's also like community feedback, like player feedback, yeah, which you can get at the same time. And even Square um, Enix has done that with Octopath Traveler one and two, even. So did they? Yeah, yeah, they did a huh. early. They did a demo, and then oh. they collected player <laughs> feedback after the demo. And they use that to help them with balance. So, yeah. <laughs> you know what they did with uh, user feedback? So, uh, uh, Babylon something? Babylon oh, yeah. Fell, that's, if only, <laughs> if only, uh, let me tell you guys, if only the players had uh, had told them more truthfully about what graphics could have been improved. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. Would you have recommended this game to your friends? <laughs> what a yeah, weird... like Boulder... what, yeah, Boulder Gate. Uh, how did that question even make it past QA? <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, how did that make it past anybody? Uh, mm, I feel like they had to release some kind of questions, but they had to ask questions that don't insult people. Yeah. So they're like, how about if the graphics was a little better? Would you would you recommend this game? And they know exactly what's wrong with the game. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. 
I feel like the people who released the question probably had like guns pointed their heads. It's they were probably going things. through the motions at that point. Yeah, at that point. Yeah. yeah. All the case three uh, was in early access apparently. So there you go. That's like another thing that's a similar practice. I, I I feel like there are so many things that these companies are doing right that they can maybe keep yeah. doing that. Like they're on the right path. People are receptive to this. Um, yeah. I don't know. Interesting to see. Yeah, I suppose, you know, if it's if it's if it helps the community feel like they've got hands on and can like affect the flow of it, I guess that's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, moving along, uh, we've got a side scrolling action adventure from Izanagi Games and Acquire, speaking of uh, Octopath Traveler, called <laughs> Amidama, which will launch in early access soon via PC and Steam. The game follows Yushin, who was murdered and must shift from body to body to find the whereabouts of his younger sister, all within seven days before his soul departs from the world. Mm -hmm. Let's check out that trailer. So this game is like loop eight, but loop seven. Is that right? Uh, well, no, not not quite. But Wasn't you there do, a... You do replay the event again, and you make different meaningful choices and see if you can reach, like, a different conclusion. I, from what I understood as part of the game loop. The visuals on this are pretty interesting. It looks kind of like uh, PlayStation 1-ish. It's got that pixely kind of... Kind of low-poly... Yeah, um, that very heavily aliased look there. I kind of dig it. Um, you know, and and acquire they were the first ones to pioneer the HD two D, and this you know, is kind of interesting. What's that? You said the exact same thing when you saw this before. <laughs> Did I? You have seen this before. You said the exact same thing. <laughs> if nothing else, it means Derek is consistent. Am I right? Yeah. I, I guess yeah. you're right. I yeah. mean, no. I have no recollection of this. I'm, <laughs> I am, I am Gandalf. You know, going through Moria. I have no yeah. memory of this place. <laughs> so basically, long story short, uh, for this game is that uh, you, you 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 play as a guy named Yushin, uh, and you were murdered by a gang of people, mm -hmm. uh, and then. Uh, you, your soul remain, but then you discover that you have the ability to, like, you know, send your soul to, like, different bodies and process them. Uh, so you're basically jumping from soul body to body to try to find your little sister who's been kidnapped. And you're trying to figure out, like, who did all this to you and why. It's some kind of like a murder mystery thing. But the catch is you have to do it within seven days. Yeah. And I you wonder don't if... Have time. I wonder if that means that there's like a timer tied to this. I wonder about that too. Like how are you counting seven or days? Or is it like, like by stage? Yeah, I see. That's the thing that I'm not sure about. But I yeah. feel like it's pretty cool whenever they add like just a little bit of a sense of urgency to it. It's like, yeah, put a little bit, speaking of fire, putting a little fire uh, behind you, you know? Yeah. I think the game looks, uh, it has a really unique aesthetic that I, I really so uh, I, I'm hoping you guys will find this uh, to be a worthwhile investment of your time, especially uh, coming from... I mean, this is basically an indie game that got a larger publisher. So don't think of this as being like an Acquire created game. This is just being published by Acquire. Oh, it's published yeah, it's, by Acquire. Yeah, it's okay. very much an indie game. All right. Kind of like um, another game that we'll talk about later that uh, started off as just like a pure indie game and it got picked up by a larger publisher. And, you know, this Gosh. is this is a similar case. Yeah, pretty pretty wild that uh, <laughs> we're still have so many games ahead of us. I guess this is what oh. happens when we skip uh, skip a week, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes we skip a week and it's fine. Other times we skip a week and, and we're like not. Yeah, yeah, this is this is that week. So, uh, early aspects for this game begins in March 22nd, which is, I think, not this weekend, but next weekend. But coming yeah. soon. Yeah. It's... A demo is actually available already on Steam. Uh, just not the early access. But yeah, you want to try your hands on it, demo's already there. 
Yeah. Awesome. All right. Oh, you're up next. <laughs> That 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 was your line. It was, but you know, I, 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 like I got you, it. buddy. <laughs> Thank you. I, I was just so stoked about this game. <laughs> Anyways, uh, the next game that we have is coming from publisher and developer Spectra Entertainment, who has announced the release date for their new strategy RPG called Dream Tactics. Join Nero and friends who will travel across Dreamwell in vanquishing evil pillows. They've taken evil over pillows. Evil pillows. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's taking over Dream World and putting the inhabitants in never ending sleep, which sounds pretty good to me. I don't know. Like, I love to just never wake up. I, I don't. Baku, do we need to have a heart to heart? You're my friend. Okay. I don't want to die, but I just okay. want to sleep. <laughs> okay. That's the difference. <laughs> You're very important to me, Baku. I just want you to know that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's check out Dream Tactics. <laughs> now, this is the trailer I picked up. See, out. look at these evil pillow. Oh, and they're evil laughters. Oh, no. I like this anime animated trailer. It's really cute. Oh. Kind of gives new meaning to the phrase pillow fight, huh? <laughs> Oh, look at the fettle that came out from stabbing the pillow. Oh, no, that's gory oh, as no. heck, man. <laughs> Do we need to mark this as, as, you know, NSFW? Oh, no. <laughs> Not safe for life. Oh, gore. I like the graphics, too. It's kind of cute. It's, I don't know how to, I don't know how to, what to call this, kind of. Where, is this like Game Boy Advance, kind of? It does have that little right? bit of that look, yeah. Mm -hmm. But also kind of that look of early, like, PC. Like, early, early PC. Like, you know, kind of like a, a vampire survivor. Like, that super simplistic kind of character look. Um, extra low pixel count. Burn those pillows. Set them ablaze. Hmm. As a tactical RPG. Oh. That, that's pretty cool, man. That is one giant pillow. Is that a pillow with guns? Maybe. Yeah, this is, I think this is a new like trailer too. So that's I've some not pretty, seen this before. Pretty sick uh animation, that's for sure. Yeah. I'm telling you, man, you can't you can't discount these like indie developers anymore. They've gotten a lot more. So they're not like the indie developers from like 15 years ago. No, certainly like, not. And I have yeah. and I have something else to show you, Baku, that uh, that I included on my own. You I, haven't I, seen this trailer yet either, but we have another indie. I, that, uh... You know, what's crazy is that I actually saw that game way back before all this stuff. And Me too. I just kind of threw it in my back burner. And then recently all this stuff happened. We'll get yeah. to it. We'll get yeah, to it. Yeah, Anyways, yeah. Uh, so Dream Tactics uh, is coming out on PC April 15th. So not far from now. Uh, on uh, Only for PC on Steam. All righty. So we got this other one uh, that was just announced. It's another very small uh outfit um tiny yeah you've probably never heard of them before they've only made like 13 games in this series before uh so <laughs> nisa have announced the release date for the legend of heroes trails through daybreak and is uh detailing the limited edition for the uninitiated, this is the newest entry in Falcom's long-running uh, Trails series of games to be released internationally. Uh, the game takes place about a year after the events of Trails into Reverie, and we have a trailer for this as well. Um, oh man, I have not seen a, a trailer for Daybreak yet. Should you not look? Do you not want to look? Is this, is I, this I think spoiler? I can. I think I could probably look. I don't know about everybody else. This is the start of a brand new arc. I'm just gonna not remember this, so it's fine. <laughs> I mean, I don't I think it matters. Simply... It's all new cast, as far as I know. 
Okay, I might recognize one person, but I don't even know if that's It's trails. You will see people from other games. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm sure that that might eventually be the case. Um uh, I've heard I think that they changed up the battle system in this one. I'm kind of curious about what that some, looks like. There's a little bit of action gameplay in Kuro. Yeah. It's not pure, like, turn-based. I don't know how that works. I never okay. looked into it because I want to be pleasantly surprised when I play it. So that was very... It didn't show off really anything. And I think we talked over <laughs> all of the dialogue, so I still have no idea what happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have so, no idea. Cool. Mission accomplished. <laughs> That's that for the I'm entire still, series. I still haven't seen the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh, Mar Martin No Magic, you you now cannot play this series anymore. We have spoiled the entire series for you. Oh, man. Good day, sir. You will not play a single <laughs> game ever again. But the thing is, that's not too terribly far removed from, like, certain parts of, like, the uh, like Cold Steel series where, like, trailers would really have huge spoilers. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, that's kind of fun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But hey, whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, this game is slated to come out officially in yes. just four months. You have four months to catch up, everybody. Oh my <laughs> god, I have four months to catch up. Okay, I because I still have Reverie in front of me. Um, all right, it's coming to PlayStation Four, PlayStation Five, the Nintendo Switch, and also PC. And the limited edition includes two art books not just one mm -hmm. two not art books one two yeah a physical and digital soundtrack thank That's you right. thank you uh a steel book a business card case for reasons sure <laughs> and a movie poster card set mm. a movie poster card set yeah uh, so all the all the poster cards are done in the style of movie posters huh yeah. Cool. Interesting, right? That's With neat. The characters from the game. I yeah, mean, I can dig cool. it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also, uh, there as of last time we checked, there's about 10% left uh, of stock for that limited edition. Um, so you might want to get on that after I've ordered mine. I FOMO than I ordered it, even though I was complaining about ordering the limited edition for Reverie because mm -hmm. I'm never going to play it. I You'll get there. You I don't will. know why I yeah, but by the time I get there, I could probably buy the limited edition for way less. The why am no, I pre-ordering? No, no. Why why would I do that? Line goes up, Baku. The line only goes up. You know, you get the limited edition, you know, later it's gonna cost you like four hundred dollars because everybody well, knows that none of these ever sold. <laughs> well, I just don't buy the limited edition. I mean nope. I just don't do it. No, nope. I mean, no, nope. that's that's what happens. You know, I bought the limited edition for all the Trails games for no reason. I don't, I, I've only played through one series. Yeah. I mean, one arc, I mean. Did you did you uh, well, play why? the third, though? Did you? No. You didn't play Trails in the oh, Sky no, the third? No, no, that, that's, that's, oh, you the, did. that's, the, that's the arc. I, okay, I okay, okay. The first. okay. I played through the first. I played all of Sky. Okay. That's it. Let me tell you, though. Uh, Zero and Azure, it's... it's so crossbell good. it is so good yeah buddy. i've I've heard crossbell is amazing yeah but that's the thing i could have stopped at crossbell but then i have all of cold steel oh you you don't have to play cold steel but i have them the point is i spent money on them i mean when i shouldn't have. don't don't worry about playing <laughs> through cold steel yet buddy just focus on crossbell because that is so good that when you're done you'll probably have already started playing cold steel by the time you've come back to consciousness Okay. Anyways, <laughs> I mean, you'll you'll probably want to wait until after you're done pursuing your next degree in waifu studies. <laughs> you know, I was just thinking, like you were saying, oh, you gotta catch up before July. I'm like, if I quit school and work tomorrow, can I realistically <clears throat> play through Crossbell and Cold Steel and Reverie and catch up by July? You know what? And I think the answer is no. <laughs> I think the answer is. You've just come up with the concept of like a really <laughs> cool YouTube series of vlogs. But it requires me to quit my school and quit my job. Yes. Uh, go big or go home. Am I right? That's right, man. Right, Swing guys? for the fences. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, if you had one shot. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> 
I don't want mom's spaghetti. I'm good. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Go for it. You got, you got oh, next. Boy. I'm sorry. I, you know, you, we, you, you guys know that we have love for small indies and this is another, uh, such, uh, small indies. And I feel like we don't talk about this and no one would ever hear about these games. Oh, you're right? probably right. So, yeah. yeah. So, uh, during the latest Pokemon presents, uh, the Pokemon company, I know you guys never heard of them, uh, announced that they'll be releasing a new Pokemon game called Pokemon legends Z a, uh, not a whole lot is known about this tiny little game at the moment, but it appears the game will take place in the Kalos region, uh, where Pokemon X and Y took place. Uh, I, I feel like they skipped like the whole black and white and and the whole like sun and moon because the last legend game was on like Sino, which I felt like is the fourth game. I thought Pokemon Legends was like Ar Ar Arceus. Arceus, yeah, and which is like Diamond. Yeah, and that, Pearl. that was in in the Sino region. Yeah, yeah, in the Sino region. Yeah, so um, while the Pokemon Legends Arceus took the player back in time. In the ancient uh, Sino region, uh, it is unclear what era this game will actually take place. But judging by what we've seen so far, it doesn't appear that they will take people to the past again. Let's take a look at that quick trailer so that we can see uh, what this game is about or as much as we can see it anyhow. I am excited for more Pokemon Legends games. I really enjoyed Arceus. And this is not coming from like a Pokemon fan. This is just coming from like a gamer. I just enjoyed I think, sneaking around. And... I think that's not a coincidence. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was just so I'll, I will fun. Hold, I will hold my tongue though. I, I, I cause part of, mm, I, I tend to get myself into, into a little bit of trouble when I talk about Pokemon. Oh, why? Like, who's who's getting mad at you oh, for I mean, it? I don't. I don't know. I th so there's Pokemon fans, mm -hmm. uh, and and they like Pokemon exactly the way that it is and has always mm. been. Mm -hmm. um, Ar Arceus, uh, Arceus, uh, rather, I think was kind of uh, the kind of game that appeals to people who prefer a little bit more of that story-driven narrative. Uh, you know, focus a little bit more of that evolution of gameplay. Seeing Pokemon in the world, a little bit of that open world sort of environment. <laughs> I've been asking for that sort of thing in Pokemon for mm -hmm. ages. And in the past, people would get really angry with me. Really? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. So, I oh, mean, this... I don't yeah, know. The... The the, the 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 thing that we just saw just now like is the reason why people are just memeing this game so hard and calling it Pokemon Pizza because <laughs> <of the> <laughs> <city talking>. pizza. <laughs> I thought it was amazing. I mean, it uh, could be Pokemon Midgar though. I mean, Pokemon Midgar, yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I will say the story in the way of Arceus was actually pretty weak, but the gameplay was fantastic. Um, which is did it involve yeah. going to a bunch of different towns to f defeat a bunch of gym leaders? No, to become Arceus? a Pokemon master. No, no See, not Arceus. At least it wasn't that again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and this is just but based was, on what was I've there heard. was there Team Rocket or some sort of a similar like bad guy that just yes okay and yes, and was it very formulaic that. That, that's a, that's a staple i just that's wanted something a, a little less thing. formulaic is is kind of yeah, what i'm it, coming it's, to it's not a group of people but only like three people you know what i mean like team oh, rock is yeah. like an organization right it's like no this time it's just like the three people that keeps getting in your way but they're like joke characters that are just like kind of throw away um, so it's basically team rocket okay yeah, basically Team Rocket. Team Rocket, um, but without like the 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 semblance of having uh more an entire organization. Grunts. Actually, wait, hold on. Is there? No, there isn't. There okay. isn't. There isn't. Yeah. It's early enough okay. in the timeline they haven't amassed a grunts <laughs> yet. Cuz I think about it, I'm like, no, there are two there are two of indigenous villagers that are um by the same theme of like the quote unquote team rocket, but they're not like an evil organization. They're just indigenous people with 
that that has like a certain symbol that they use for their village mm. and then those symbols became like the team rocket symbols for like in later generation but they're like unrelated it's gotcha. it's it's weird how that worked out but yeah okay. um anyhow um so yeah uh no additional news on pokemon legends za i wonder if that's even the final name i just feel like maybe they're gonna have like an actual name later on i, I think this is just a very bad name i don't know yeah well uh it, they i don't know whatever <laughs> let's move on to a game that i care about guys yes. and and this is one that uh I, I, I nearly, I was this close to making a video about this game and a few mm -hmm. others when I was looking up, uh, pixel based, uh, indie RPGs that mm -hmm. I was hyped for. I, I just couldn't quite pull it together enough to really talk about, but this was one of them. And, and now, now they have been successfully kickstarted. So Yay. we're going to, we're going to talk a little bit about, uh, this little two player co-op indie rpg action rpg that's coming to nintendo switch playstation 5 xbox and steam uh, it's called god shard uh, god shard chronicles yes it's uh being developed by some people that uh baku i think you and i are a little bit familiar with uh mm -hmm. at least some people from something classic uh yes. from like quartet and uh my familiar are also working on this uh mm -hmm. it features a heroic and emotional story centered around two female mana knights. Mm -hmm. It has local co-op with a friend from Ooh. beginning to end. Rich, okay. rich and melodic music by Noriyuki Iwadare and mm -hmm. Shauno Isomura. Uh, Noriyuki Iwadare, by the way, for those of you who don't know that name off the top of your head, I mean, everybody who does know is probably going like, oh my God, Noriyuki Iwadare. <laughs> uh, but it's the dude who uh, composed for Lunar, Grandia, Ooh. Ooh. Growlanzer. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some How solid they A to hire this guy. <laughs> I don't know, but he's working on this one too. It's going to feature they, some hand drawn anime cutscenes with voice acting. With and, voice acting. And high quality pixel art for a uh, of a colorful and unique fantasy world. So nice. um, let's go ahead and take a look at the trailer here so you guys can Love see it. what's uh, going on here. Let's. Typically, I don't talk about stuff that's still in Kickstarter, but uh, but since it's been funded already, I'll, I'll, I'll consider this. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so I have seen this game before. Shh, shh, shh. Listen to music. Ooh. You can you can talk again when we play the trailer again. <laughs> oh my god! I know. Two player local co op. <clears throat> Inspired by Lunar. I feel like they've gotten a lot of art inspiration from the Mana series. Yep, Can't inspired by me. Mana. Oh, absolutely. Can't tell me Mana series is not. Oh my god. If if you didn't tell me this is an indie game, just show me like just this, I would have been like, are they doing like a Mana game? What? <laughs> Dude, look at that. This is a freaking Mana game. <laughs> Doesn't that I'm a look Mana sick. fan. I can tell immediately like with that art style. Mm hmm. Ooh, the voice actor. Like that. Someone has to tell her. It's for the best. The knighthood. Oh wow, you couldn't be a bad guy. You could God. possibly. You be don't a know daddy. that. You don't know that. <laughs> it could be anybody. <laughs> he's the he's a third co-op character. You didn't think that you can control another one. Look at that hand drawn. That is so cool. Animation. That is so cool. I know, dude. Theme song is quite nice too. I like how they managed to do the whole like uh, you and Ken thing pretty well there. Oh yeah, a little bit. Player one, player one, player two. I I respect it. All right. So like I said, 
uh, they have successfully met their met their funding uh, mm-hmm. for just delivering the game, but they do still have three more weeks of being up on Kickstarter. So go get in there and get some, if, if yeah. that was of interest to you, it might still be a ways off from like a full release, of course. But, uh, but uh, hey. yeah, if you feel like being a supporter. I had joined it already. Did you really? I think I did. Well, when, yeah, some time ago. But then yeah. I, sometimes I join these projects and then I'm just like completely forget that I joined <laughs> until they send me those like monthly emails like, oh yeah, I gave you money. <laughs> what happened to it? <laughs> this is one. Oh boy. Can I, can I talk about this real quick before sure. we move on to sure, the sure. Uh, uh, next section? Um, Cause I gotta, I gotta pull this up here uh i got a project update from a game called uh what is this even called <laughs> gave some money so long ago hang on it's called um war of Az- azure azured azured as a s h i r d and this is supposed to be released in Q2, Q3 of 2024. I think I gave them money like six, seven years. It's, ago. it's called, what is it? War of Azure. A-S-H-I-R-D. Yeah. Oh, I see it. I see it. Okay. Do you, do you see that? Yeah. yeah it, I don't even remember what kind of game this is. I just saw it and I was like, oh yeah, that looks interesting. And then I like gave them money. Oh, it's like, it's like a tactical RPG. Oh yeah, this, this does look vaguely yeah. familiar too. Yeah. And I'm just like, I completely forgot that this was the thing. Yeah. Um, because it's been so long and I've heard like no news. And I saw an update today, update number 44, uh, telling me that uh they have improved on the game and added some new dialogue and such and such. And I'm like, oh, you're still a thing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, good on you for still working on yeah. it. Yeah, at uh, least you didn't know. just like fall off the face of the planet yeah, or something. You- yeah, I, I, one of these days I got to look back at all the like Kickstarter and just like try to see what happened to them. Some of them I know, like Aiden and Chronicle, I know exactly what's happening to it. Like Dude. Penny Blood, I've been pay pretty close attention to yes. whatever new things. I want to see some of these. I have really forgotten. <laughs> I, I would, I would watch a YouTube video, Baku, of of uh, your uh, Kickstarters. Where are they now? <laughs> like a like a behind the music, but it's just like. Just a follow up, just a just a status update of every game that you've ever kickstarted. <laughs> kickstarted. Yeah. What happened? To, what about you? What happened to all the kickstarters that you joined? Well, one of them was uh, uh, Shenmue Three. Okay. H- how was that? Did you? One of them like... was Aiden Chronicle, <laughs> Hundred Heroes, and we know that game is going to be amazing. Okay. Yeah. Um, Already know. Anyway, I still haven't played Shenmue Three. Um, <laughs> I have it. It's still sitting in the special Kickstarter box. <laughs> I, I, I I haven't played that's... I haven't played Shenmue two yet though, so I got it. <laughs> I just I just wanted to support. I was hyped. I could have sworn that one of the game actually got released, but it it just didn't look good at all. That I'm just like you, you can keep the money. Like I don't I don't want it. Anyway, I don't want to spend more time playing as the sun cost fallacy at this point. <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah, God Shard looks freaking incredible, and I think uh, I'm gonna need to uh, probably open my wallet for them as well. Oof. Looks like a lot of fun, but worthy spending is worthy spending. Yeah, I mean, last game I was that hyped for. Oh, what? Well, Aiden Chronicles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, Kickstarter, anyways. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, because I, I don't think I kickstarted, and I honestly, I should have kickstarted um, uh, Sea of Stars. Yeah, but... what, was that, what was that game that you, like, really liked that we just saw the other day? That I was like, oh, you're going to like this one. Oh, man. The one from the from two weeks ago? Yeah. Um, I can look it up real quick. Yeah, and you were like, oh, man, this is, like, my jam. Oh, my God. Was it, wait, was it the one that I included? There was one that I included that you hadn't seen before. Um, I, I gotta look, I, you know what? Okay, I'll, I'll go look. Anyway, sorry. Let me, let me talk about the next piece of news and then. Uh, we'll, Cause we'll, that, we'll, oh, Secrets of Grindia was the one that I talked about two weeks ago. 
Oh no, not that one. But okay. you were excited about that. It was, yeah. yeah. Bloomfield. Oh no. Oh, I'll, yeah, I'll figure it out. Bloomfield. Bloomfield. Maybe that was Bloomfield. it. Bloomfield. Well, Bloomfield's one of them. That's the that one that's like rad. in the eighties and and stuff. Yeah, yeah. With like the boombox and everything. Yeah. Yeah, that that game looks really good. I'm super stoked for that. Yeah, I'll figure it out. But anyways, right, uh, let's right. move on to the next uh sets of news our uh, final segment actually it's close to final segment uh industry news ba, ba, da, ba. all right ba, ba, da, ba. all right starting off the industry news we've got uh the pokemon company again uh you will find that there are a couple of pokemon related news today uh the pokemon and hatsune miku collaboration called project voltage had actually just concluded with the last song released called Glorious Day by Vocaloid producer Eve. Uh, there were a total of 18 songs released, one for each of the types in Pokemon. Now, uh, Vocaloid fans uh, will be no stranger to these names, uh, Dekonina, Michi M, uh, Pinocchio P, and Cosmo. Hmm. Th- these are pretty, like some OG like Vocaloid producers that have made some like the biggest hits uh in in the genre if you will uh they were all part of the collaboration along with a couple of newer like you know faces so i thought it was like a pretty cool like passing the torch kind of moment uh with pokemon each of the songs is uh really cool because they mix in like sound elements from the games and like if you are uh, a fan of the pokemon series you'll be able to pick out these little sounds and see how they have changed it and used it uh in their music for it to make sense i thought uh they're all super unique and super um uh uh uh, what's the word um well thought out uh composition so uh definitely check them out uh there are some accompanying uh illustrations so being just a miku fan i just had to let everyone know that this had been a thing and it's now complete you don't have to wait for weekly releases anymore. All 18 songs are there. So, yeah, please check out Pokemon Voltage. All right. The Project Voltage. <laughs> so, um, based on what I can only assume was a misguided uh, uh, Google search, <laughs> Toyota has decided that uh, Pokemon fans want to ride Pokemon in real life. <laughs> they've, they've done some research. Mm-hmm. around certain forums of the internet and discer- determined that. Uh, unfortunately, they got the Pokemon wrong because it's... Because uh, <laughs> the one that they chose uh, to make writable is, in fact... Uh, let me see. There's a there's a button here. Um, is it... This one. Yes. <laughs> it's Mira, Miraidon? I don't know. Miraidon, yeah. Yeah. Which, which I mean... <laughs> It looks it looks like a motorcycle, right? You wouldn't download a motorcycle. You wouldn't you wouldn't pirate a motorcycle, would you? So so here we go. Um, you can now, if you if you have the right kind of money, you can ride a Pokemon IRL. Uh, yeah, they've announced it. Yeah. Uh, it's it's Toyota Miraidon Project, which. We'll have uh, them create a real motorcycle shaped ride like a rideable Muradon from Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Yay. It's real. It's real. It's a thing. It's it, not April yet. This is real. This is not for it is not April Fools. It could have been this worse. Is real. <laughs> this is this is real, guys. Toyota is seriously about this. <laughs> seriously though, I would I'd probably prefer, personally speaking, I would probably mm-hmm. have preferred a uh like a a Gyarados blow up uh like pull toy <laughs> that would be pretty sick i would probably buy that but but this yeah i don't I know don't know i it, don't know about this <laughs> it not only it not only looks like the worst pokemon but also the worst motorcycle <laughs> okay so if toyota made like a mirai don themed motorcycle i thought sure. i think that would be pretty cool or mm-hmm. or, or not a mirai don but the other one i forgot I forget I, what the other one is called. Yeah, the, the Miraidon is the purple one. Then there's like a red one for Scarlet. Um, but if they made like a themed motorcycle, I would have been like, "Oh, that's really cool." Uh, and Toyota is known to do that in Japan anyway. So this is 
they, they, they don't do that outside the country, but within the country, they have done some like collaboration themed like vehicles and they sold pretty well. Um, but Toyota's that's said, like this. Yeah, this is different. <laughs> Toyota's this like, is, uh... I think our, I think, I think our problem is that motorcycles just make our, our clients look too cool. How do we fix that? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, okay. Geez. I mean, okay. Yeah. For real, that that will p- appeal to somebody. They mm-hmm. might be thirteen right now, but eventually they might want that when they grow up. Once Toyota is uh, gone through all the proper testing and release, that child will be eighteen. This seriously looks like a one-off. Though. <laughs> I don't. I don't know, man. This looks. I I don't know what they're going to do. I I'm still waiting. There's not enough news for it, but they have announced that this is a real project. It looks called like the it Toyota was Toyota Mirai Don project. It looks to me like this was designed to be given away by Mr. Beast. <laughs> no, see, that's the prototype. Okay. That's the prototype. Yeah. So I don't know what they actually, are they going to do a small run? Like, what are they going to do? And how much is that thing going to cost? Because. I, I can't much? imagine it being like inexpensive because of all the tooling. I'm sure. So, I'm sure like... that. Okay, there's got to be some overlap between Pokemon Mega fans and Crypto Bros, and I think <laughs> that's the market segment that Toyota is is uh, you know that's the segment that they're targeting here. I think you're onto something because that cannot be cheap. That has to be that like cannot be cheap. I mean, yeah. I mean, Are despite real? appearances. <laughs> That's also the Pokemon tax. I mean, they're going to get theirs too. Oh my so, gosh. You yeah. know? Ooh. Oh man. Yep. There's, right. there's going to be like 12 of those ever made <laughs> and they're all going to be like $3 million at least. <laughs> uh, I, I'd love to see one on the open road. I, I would, I would pay anything to see one. <laughs> But not like ride the thing. Just I just wanted to see it. How do you uh, steer it? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> However, you steer it. I don't even see it. handlebars. <laughs> the, I think the real one would have the handlebar. It has to, right? Like that. That's just a safety thing. It's you point, would think. Right? <laughs> you would hope. It's <laughs> so instead of having like the Maridon head. Attach. It's just the helmet, so you just wear the helmet, and you're like the head of the Maridon. You have to behead it you just, first. You, just, you become the Maridon. Okay? You have to rip it off. Oh no, <laughs> the steering wheel is just the tire that you're grabbing onto. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> okay, we have to move on. I I told you guys every time I talk about Pokemon, I'm gonna anger somebody at the who loves Pokemon. <laughs> Let's move on. They're gonna write. They're writing you angry <laughs> message right now. And as soon as we're done this video, the comment section opens. They're gonna paste it immediately. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Anyways, uh, let's move on to something else that's not Pokemon related. Uh, anime production studio PA Works announced that they will be creating the anime adaptation of the action farming game Sakuna of Rice and Ruin. This is interesting. Uh, there was a small teaser, but no actual animation was shown, so I didn't feel like it was worthwhile for us to look at. But pretty cool because an indie game got uh, an anime adaptation. You know that we don't see that all the time, but especially uh, one that did yeah. like it did fairly well, but I don't think yeah. it did gangbusters. Yeah, no, and that's the crazy thing for and me. It I'm happened like, like four years ago. Things. When did this? Yes. When did that it, come it was, out? It was a while. It was during the pandemic. I'm pretty sure. Sakuna. It came yeah. out. Um, release date. 2020. Yeah. November of 2020. Oh, wow. Yeah. See, that was during the height of the pandemic. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's why. Like they've always wanted to do it, but then they couldn't. And now that like pandemic is kind of like subside more yeah. or less. Like yeah, lockdown know, has but, been lifted, and and now. Yeah everything is flowing again i i don't know who decided that this was a good idea to do it now but it's cool and i kind of support it i have never even played sakuna mm-hmm. i've heard that it's like a really like heartwarming kind of like situation like you it's a feel good game when you play it you know um that's why i've been told anyways i have no idea don't don't at me, okay? I've never played a game. But it looks really good. The character design, everything looks really good. 
Uh, so I have no doubt that if they uh, stay faithful to the story, they can make a pretty good anime, honestly. And I would love to see this trend happen more, yeah. where we have more like quality interplay between anime and game, from anime to game, and from games to anime, especially indie game to yeah. anime. I think that's freaking awesome. That is super cool. Yeah. Uh, in a similar vein, um, M- Miyamoto announced via twitter that uh super mario bros movie is getting a sequel hey it's sick. of course there is yeah i mean of it was course. it was teased at the end of the of original course. title it was already teased so we kind of assumed but uh i mean they did a pretty good job with the first one i actually really enjoyed it uh so you know uh it's quite, also quite gonna understatement there. it's <laughs> also going to be featuring the same mostly the same development staff uh is it still development staff when it's a, a CG movie or is it like production staff? Um, a little bit of both. A little bit of, yeah, a little column A, a little column B. Yeah. Um, yeah, nearly the same production team as the original, and it has an expected release date of April 3rd of 2026. Worth the wait. Yeah, yeah. Well, I yeah. mean, that's that's a ways away. Um, <laughs> did they, did they only just now green light it? <laughs> I would have thought they would have green lit it like after breaking like records in the box office, but maybe, I mean, then again, this is Sonic Nintendo movie came out. Sonic movie came out first, right? Yeah. Yeah. And but then they, Mario's like, yo, we need that. We need that money. There. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I'm just saying they're going to have Sonic 4 out by the time by the time Mario 2 comes out. Please, Sega does not know how to count. To <laughs> That's true. Well, then so I, I I bet Sonic 4 is going to be released by Atlas, just saying. Um be a, it'll be a turn-based RPG. You're probably right. Wouldn't that be crazy? Uh, I um, think didn't Sonic 4 come out on the Wii? Did it? I th- I might be wrong. I might be thinking of Mega Man 9. <laughs> I'm pretty sure That's... though. Yeah, Sonic 4 ha- was like broken up into like a few different episodes on Wii. Oh, so it was released on WiiWare. I, yeah. I didn't I didn't think it was an actual thing. Yeah, yeah. Huh. Interesting. I always thought it was a Sonic 3 and then just like whatever weird Sonic games that came out after that. No, it was is a really obscure wow. re-release or releases uh in episodic nature on WiiWare back well, when I guess I that was be, a thing. Uh... Yeah. excuse to not know that one <laughs> yeah all right uh moving on we do have just a little bit of news uh from Final fantasy 7 rebirth uh and this one this one i truly recommend for everyone to take a watch including derek because i don't think derek's seen this uh after we're done with this broadcast please uh don't go immediately uh but uh nobuo uematsu uh, as you all know, uh, the fame producer behind many of the classics behind Final Fantasy joined, uh, I believe her name is Lauren Allred, uh, and apologies for mispronouncing her name, uh, perhaps. Um, they actually appeared in this uh, Japanese YouTube channel called uh, The First Take. Derek, do you know what The First Take is? Um, in like the, the show? Yeah, like the channel, the show, no. if you will. No. Okay. So I, I, I'm i just going to assume that most people don't know what that is. But basically, they're a Japanese YouTube channel where they invite singers to perform a song recorded in one take. That's all you get. So that's why it's called the first take. Whatever you see, that's the first take. And so if they do this, like, you know you know uh if they make any little mistakes any little it's gonna thing, be there, the there's no product. retake it's, yeah. it's in there yeah um which is really interesting to see because sometimes they will make just tiny little mistakes but i feel like that's what gives it that like real feel versus that like a studio record feeling. kind of deal yeah. yeah i which i really which i actually really enjoy yeah. uh but anyway so they performed uh no promises to keep which is the theme song to Final Fantasy Rebirth on the first take. And let me tell you, um, it, this doesn't often happen, but I might have been tearing up just a little bit from listening to it. The vocal was just so gorgeous. 
uh, and and all the accompanying music. It was just I haven't even played a game. I have no emotional attachment to the song whatsoever. It's not like oh I'm hearing the song and these scenes are playing is messing with my head. No, just the fact that her vocal was just so good that like it got to me in an emotional level, and that does not happen all the time. So I'm I'm seeing it crazy praises, but please check it out. There's a reason why she was chosen to sing the theme song, and I think they made the right choice. It's the first time I've heard this theme song, by the way. Hmm. Uh, and and holy crap, it just blew me away uh, how good it was. Um, so I think for people who have actually played a game, I think this would be especially meaningful. So uh, please check out the first take uh, with Nobuo Uematsu and Lauren Allred. Uh, you can just search YouTube, and it's probably already there. Uh, we can probably leave the link uh because you know it's a youtube link so hopefully youtube's not gonna shut us down again for sharing a, a unsafe link one That's might hope YouTube. One, one might hope <laughs> so All right. uh last but not least in industry news not not least in the in the least i suppose um in the slightest in the slightest right? thank you so yeah. much um yeah legendary mangaka Akira Toriyama, creator of Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, uh, Slump. The uh, character designer behind Dragon Quest and uh, so many other properties that we love. <laughs> Countless. Chrono Trigger, um, Blue Dragon. He, unfortunately, passed away on the 1st of March. Um and about a week later was announced by his uh, studio uh, that that had occurred. So uh, I already put out a video talking about my experience uh, with, uh, you know, getting to know Akira Toriyama through his work um, and kind of working through processing some of that on my own. Uh, if you want to know more about that, go check it out. But um, but yeah. That it's just a, such a loss for the industry that I feel it wouldn't be right to not mention it uh, during today's show, despite having also made a whole video talking about it. So, um, <laughs> yeah, rest in peace, absolute legend, and uh, that's that's two two massive legends in just too short of a time. Twenty twenty four is shaping up to be a rough year. Actually, three. <laughs> oh, really? We'll, we'll talk about the third one uh, maybe in a little bit. I didn't write into the script, but I can, I can tell you. Uh, but let's just, let's just keep okay. on this for now. Sure. Um, yeah, so it's pretty cool that we at least got like Sandland basically yes. done. Because that will basically be like one of his like last like legacy work mm -hmm. to remember him by. And Sandland is shaping up to be looking amazing, uh, by the way. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm, I'm so glad that they picked this, like, relatively obscure work that he has made in the past and, like, modernized it and turned it into, like, give it, like, a life of its own, you know? Um, for those who don't know, like, Sandland was, like, a one-shot that he wrote uh, a long time ago. Um, and, and mangaka typically would do these one-shots, just, like, a short take, just to... They like a have short this, story. Like, yeah. yeah, they have like a muse and then they just want like an outlet so they just draw like a short story. It's not going to be like a long sequel, whatever, a, a long series. Yeah. Uh, but then pre precisely because it is like a one shot, uh, it's actually a good length for a game. Um, and, and, and so I thought that was pretty neat that uh, they had chosen that of many things that... Uh, Toriyama had created in his lifetime that they could have chosen. They've chosen Sandland. Yeah. Uh, so it will be extra meaningful to see how that game turns out. And I think uh, it's going to be a good one. All right. So that about does it for the uh, industry news. Unless, was there anything else you wanted to? So I guess I'll mention this. Uh, maybe less people will know about this, but uh, the voice actress for Mariko uh, also passed away. Uh, Mariko is like a very like well-known like character. mariko Jan is a very well-known character in uh, Japanese like culture 
if you will. The anime never really got popular outside of Japan. It's very similar to Shinjan, where oh. like it talks about like childhood and you know, but from a perspective of like a, a little girl, um, yeah. kind of similar to Shinjan, uh, but not not quite. Um, it, it's Shinjan, uh, as you know, is more like rambunctious and just mm-hmm. like full of curiosity. Um, Maruko Jan is like more, um, uh, what's the word? More um, internalizing things and just like viewing the world like as a little girl growing up kind of deal. Yeah, uh, it's it's kind of a coming of age kind of kind of situation. Oh, um, but just basically focusing on childhood. Uh, but it it is a classic uh, orc in uh, Japan, and the wow. voice actress uh, unfortunately passed away. Very similar age too to uh, Toriyama in in her early sixties. Uh, very very young, actually, yeah. uh, especially in Japanese standard. Because uh, if you don't know, <laughs> Japanese J- Japan has one of the longest uh, life expectancy on the planet. So yeah, yeah. Um, so very unfortunate news. Uh, and yet another legend uh, has passed. So, wow. Yeah, in the voice acting world, she's absolute legend. Uh, so uh, she will be missed. All right. Well, thank you for sharing that as well. Yeah. Um, all right. Finally, uh, I guess we do have some merch drops to talk about. Yes. And I was kind of debating if I want to talk about this, but I decided why not? I'll let you guys know about this. So you guys can make a decision whether or not you care enough about it. So um, there's a company. Oh, I forgot to put down the company name. Uh, I think it's Wayo, uh, who is uh, putting together a Xeno Saga um, piano collection. Uh, is an arrangement album that's officially licensed by Bamco uh, with based on music from Yasunori uh, Mitsuda. So it's based on music. I don't think he's actually involved. But it is uh, a piano arrangement uh, that's on Kickstarter which is pretty cool. And the album is called Across the Cosmos. Um, let me see what... Because uh, I, 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 I thought I had added the... Uh, uh, excuse me. I thought I had added... Oh, the Wayo. Wayo Records. There you go. And they have a Kickstarter campaign. And the problem with this, and the reason why I wasn't sure if I want to talk about it yet... Is because they didn't give us a link. I can't even put the link in and be like, here you go. Why don't you go take a look? Um, but it's supposed to open in two days on March 13th. So, um, you know, if that sounds like something you would be interested in, just, you know, maybe search it up in two, three days. Again, it's called Across the Cosmos Xeno, uh, sorry, it's not Xeno, Xeno Saga Piano Collection um, from Wyo Records. All right. Yes. So, uh, rewinding just a moment here mm-hmm. to uh, to an earlier Rewind. topic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, it looks like there may actually be something else. I'm not sure if, if this was an editorial decision or not, uh, mm-hmm. but Falcom did tease a new entry in the Tokyo Xanadu series. Oh, yeah. 100% editorial. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> we, we know nothing about this thing other yeah. than it's coming. <laughs> yeah. No, so, not even a Japanese release date. Nothing. Yeah. So so just all that to say that that was something that was an, it was teased, but we don't really mm-hmm. know anything about. So we will probably talk about that some other time. Yeah. There's nothing for me to say other than it's Kyoto this time and not tokyo so i i said maybe it's kyoto xanadu i don't know maybe i mean just because it's the tokyo xanadu series what if All it's right. kyoto xanadu what if i was right and it's kyoto xanadu that would be will you buy me a soda if it's kyoto xanadu um sure <laughs> all right so i'll go ahead and move us along to uh, our final section of the show which is just responding to some super chats which we actually got a super chat from still alive who says they were the ones who left us the voicemail oh <laughs> so well <laughs> thank you so much still alive for Glad the voicemail you are and still for, alive and for the uh, for the super chat 
Uh, let's see. He also goes on to say the channel that I got the rental store idea was from Retro Bird, by the way. Oh, so, okay. yeah, because he didn't specify in the voicemail. So, guys, go look up uh, Retro Bird if you're interested in more of that. And uh, yes. it also got cut off, but uh, I also finished Fire Emblem, GBA, Rygar on the NES, and Clonoa using that particular method. Which Holy is, crap, a lot of your messages got left out. Why? <laughs> well, part of it was was edited down for time, just so oh, we okay. could address it really quickly. But then, oh, uh, okay. yeah, the first part got pretty well cut off, though, unfortunately. Oh, okay, okay. So, mm -hmm. yeah, well, thank wow. you so much, man. Thank yeah. you, Still Alive. Appreciate you. Yeah. So, guys, it has been a pleasure to stream for all of you tonight. If you enjoyed today's podcast... Uh, maybe consider subscribing or liking the podcast or leaving a review on whatever podcast platform that you enjoy us on because we are available mm -hmm. on iTunes and it used to be Google Podcasts, but I guess that's gone now. <laughs> so it's just <laughs> YouTube podcasts and mm -hmm. and Stitcher used to be a thing that we podcasted on, but that's gone now too. So Spotify, I guess, anywhere that you consume podcasts. Uh, yeah, signal boosting is always very much appreciated. And, Thank uh, you. We will hang out again, uh, hopefully next week. Yes. But we'll see if, you know, things go crazy or not. Uh, and we will yes. talk to you then. Have a great night, everybody. Oh, and Baku, uh, uh, any final thoughts for the people back at home? Um, Final thoughts. They changed a line in Final Fantasy VII Remake four years later. Look it up. It's pretty interesting. Right. <laughs> I don't want to get into it, but just go look it up. <laughs> All right. Take care, everybody. Have a good night. Bye.